Hello, everyone, and good morning. David Rio appreciates your participation and welcomes you to the webinar, New Effective Tax Rates for Type of Economic Activity. In addition to our audience, please remember to feel free to send us your questions to our chat during the transmission, and our experts will answer them in the questions and answers session at the end of the webinar. It is my pleasure to introduce our panelists today. Leonardo Gámez, he is a public accountant, graduated from Autonomous University of Nuevo León. He has a master's degree in tax strategies for more than 10 years. He has advised foreign companies that want to do business in Mexico of different sizes and industries like Maquiladora Inmex, trading, manufacturing, construction, and service industry, among others. He has been a speaker for various tax topics and external forums and has published articles on taxes and other related issues in Mexico. He currently serves as a partner in charge of the Monterrey and Tijuana offices. We also have Maria Jose Gonzalez. She joined De La Rio in 2019, started in the transfer pricing area at the firm with over 13 years of experience, most of them being in the top of the big four. Maria Jose is a specialist in complying with the companies and transfer pricing matters by preparing studies and consultation, determination of intercompany policies, valuation of companies and projects such as audits before tax authorities. She also has extensive experience coordinating regional projects in La Femme. She graduated as an economist from Universidad Iberoamericana Campus Puebla and has a master's degree in strategic business consultation and graduates as a financial strategy and business strategy from Universidad Panamericana in Mexico City. Welcome, Leonardo and Maria Jose. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Monserrat, for the introductions. So today we will discuss these effective tax rates that the Tax Authority in Mexico, the SIT or SAT, uh, published in the last months and weeks, actually, and that pretend to be a reference for the taxpayers regarding this effect, its own effective tax rates. So for this, First, we will give you an overview and background on why and how this publication was made. Then some considerations that the SAT provides regarding this uh, effective rate, like how they calculated uh, the basis, the approach the authorities actually are using to, to get these effective rates, uh, that's how they call it. After that, we will show all the economic activities published, a summary on it, and we will try to explain how all this may be affecting your intercompany transactions, the pricing of these intercompany transactions, how the authority will see this. And finally, we will give you some conclusions or thoughts and, and everything about it. So I will leave you with Leo for this. Thank you, Marianne Montserrat, for that kind introduction. And thank you, everyone, for making time to attend this webinar session. So moving on to the topic that we will be discussing today, we would like to give you a quick overview uh, and background of what comes to the government of this reform. So we can see that in December 2020, the government uh, got together and issued various modifications to different tax laws in Mexico. We have a modification in the income tax law, in the value added tax law as well, and also in the federal tax code. This modification, there was a particular uh, modification to Article 33 of the Federal Tax Code, which this article, just to give you a quick overview, it's an article that mentions part of the attributions and part of the functions that the tax authority will have before the taxpayers. Just to put in a couple of examples, the article mentions that the taxpayers will always be or have to be available to attend taxpayers in case they have questions, that they have to be available as well in case the taxpayers wants to have meetings with them to review particular topics, controversies, et cetera. They also mentioned that uh, the tax authority will be able to put offices available to the taxpayers across Mexico so taxpayers can file their taxes in those offices. Taxpayers also, uh, the tax authorities, I'm sorry, will also be able to publish the forms that will be needed for taxpayers to file their taxes and so on and so forth. So again, this article just mentions a few of the attributions or uh, possibilities that tax authorities will have before taxpayers. 
So there was a new bullet that was added to this Article 33. This bullet is the one that we have in a slide where now the government will have a new attribution related to provide on a regular basis a specific parameters regarding profit, deductible items, or effective income tax rate, which is pretty much the topic that we will be discussing today. The main reason of the government to publish this effective income tax rates on a regular basis is so the taxpayers could have them as a point of references and therefore the taxpayers could have a better certainty if their tax calculations are according or are correct from the point of view of the tax authority, at least at first sight. Uh, the main idea of this is that the government will also have them separated by economic sector or industrial line of business that it belongs. And at the end, this only represents a reference for taxpayers to know if at first sight everything seems to be correct. Moving on to the next slide, part of the tax authority's comments as well, it's that this uh, tax risk will be per type of activity according to their tax registration. And this is a very important topic to keep in mind. As you know, whenever a Mexican legal entity is registered or wants to obtain the tax ID, at the first time when they approach the tax authorities, they need to fill out a form where you need to state what is the business activity that you will be carrying out. And there is a large catalog of activities. And sometimes the person or the tax officers that helps you to fill in this form is not as you as is not as aware as you or does not have all the knowledge that you may have on your company. And for him, sometimes it's a little bit easier to set one business activity just for filling out something but without having the certainty or the knowledge that that really belongs to your current business activity. So nowadays, it is a very good recommendation to make sure that the registration that you have before the tax authorities related to your economic activity really represents what you're doing. Otherwise, you could be subject to one of these reviewings even without being subject to because your business activity should not be in there. But at the moment of the allocation, you pick that one. So just a point to keep in mind. The other point that the government wants to uh, be clear and doubt, it's that whenever they publish this list, again, it's only for reference purposes. It does not intend to be an audit procedure. And this is a very important topic because in Mexico, whenever the tax authority wants to carry out a formal audit procedure, they need to issue a formal letter that should contain various information about the company, like the company name, the tax ID, the periods that they want to review, say, for example, January to December, etc., the type of contribution that they want to review, and so on and so forth. So, again, what the government is saying here is that, A, just because of the fact that I'm issuing this list, it does not mean that I'm carrying out an audit procedure. So just so you for for your own home and tranquility, just make sure of it. So moving on to the part of the effective income tax rate, what is what we know so far? Okay, there are two main concepts that the government wants us to be very familiar with because they will you will see them along in in this in this topic. The first one is what they call tax risk. From here, the definition says that it's a default or potential contingency on the tax provisions that are applicable to the taxpayer or to a group of taxpayers that results in the correct payment of income taxes. Out of this definition, there are two main points that we would like to point out that it seems to be valid. Uh, the first one is that it mentions default contingency or in other words, potential contingency. This means that even though the government published certain effective tax rate for income taxes, and it seems that you are in a high risk of being audited, this is only a potential contingency that you are on an incorrect position. So technically what they're saying is that, don't worry, it doesn't mean you're incorrect, but it means that under my radar, 
everything does not seem to be right. So therefore, I might approach to you to review a little bit more your situation. If they come and review, does that mean that my calculations are incorrect? No, the answer is no. Your calculations could be correct, but it will be on your side to be able to support the government that your calculations are correct and therefore you're determined a different effective tax rate than the government wants you to be. On the other hand, it's the same scenario. If I not under the radar of the tax risk position, meaning that I'm on the safe side, does that mean then automatically that my tax calculations are correct? No. Again, it only means that under the radar of the government on a simple reviewing, you're on the safe side. And therefore, it's not likely that you will receive an audit. But that does not automatically mean that your tax calculations are correct. Just to keep in mind. The other point to keep in mind or relevant from this definition as well, it's that it relates only to income taxes. It does not relate to value added tax. It does not relate to other uh, estate taxes that could be payroll taxes or even social security contribution and so on and so forth. So this effective income tax rate, it's particularly to corporate income tax of the company. The other second important definition the government wants you to keep in mind, it's what they would determine and call effective tax rate. This is pretty much an indicator that if I were to summary, it means how much of your revenues at the end of the day becomes part of taxes, of income taxes. And therefore you have the formula that they, where they come to the effective tax rate, where they say, hey, your accrued or incurred income tax divided between your total taxable revenue will be the effective tax rate. It's relevant to mention that this cumulative income or taxable revenue, it's only the ones related for tax purposes. As you know, uh, accounting revenue could be a little bit different than the tax revenue because there are certain criteria and things to keep in mind. So what the government is reviewing here, it's your taxable revenue. So if we were to put a numeric example, Say that in your last year, you have sales over $100 and your incur income tax in your tax in your annual tax return, not in the monthly taxes, but in your annual tax return was worth of $3. Then under that scenario, your effective tax rate would represent 3%, which means that out of $100 worth of sales, $3 transform into actual income tax. So that's pretty much one of the main definitions that we need to keep in mind to keep moving on with our analysis of the effective income tax rate. If we move on to the next slide, we will see what is the information the, com the government is currently been using to come to this analysis and, hey, and say, hey, this is the effective income tax rate that I calculated. What is the information they're taking into consideration? Okay, we have a quick list in here where we would find as item number one, the annual tax returns of the company. Item number two, tax reports. And in here, we have a wide variety of tax reports that we submit on a frequently basis to the tax authorities. Just to mention a few one that, as you know, it's mandatory for all taxpayers in Mexico and needs to be reported on a monthly basis. We have the electronic accounting reports, where, you know, as you know, we file on a monthly basis the electronic uh, trial balance uh, as well as uh, the chart of accounts. And in case if it is requested, we even need to submit all the journal entries of our accounting software. So this is this information that we provide to them on a monthly basis. Nowadays, it will be used for the government to make those analyses that they're coming or that they are using to determine the effective income tax rate. Other information that they're using, it's related to the tax situation of the taxpayers. It's an annual format that needs to be filed along with the tax return. So that's part of the information they're using, as well as some other informative returns. Again, there's a wide variety of reports that are submitted in Mexico. Just for mention a few ones, we have uh, in February uh, the operations with related parties. We have as well the annual informative of payment made to foreign residents, just for mention a few ones. 
also very important, all your electronic invoices. As you know, whenever you want to build something and deliver an invoice to your client, before your client has it, the government already has it first. So all that information that it's done digitally and the government has in its database will be used for the government to make their analysis and come to these uh, models of effective income tax rates. And also customs declarations where we would have import or export documents where we state or in our foreign trade transactions. So with that being said, what is what we have or what the government has published so far? On June 30 and on August 1st, the government has public has made two publishment in the first one they publish a smaller list of activities related to the years 2016 to 2019 of economic activities that they already made their analysis and provided the list later on on august 1st they pro they publish a second list which we will be uh, reviewing in a couple of further slides but at the end of the day they already came out with some models or forecast of what should be the correct effective tax rate from their point of view for the years 2016 to 2019. So we have four years worth of calculations from their side. What is the intention from the government? The government so far with that information that they had published, they want you to take a look at the information and then on your own numbers, compare if your effective rate in your real numbers, it's similar to the one that the government published. If not, then we'll, we will see a little bit further what, what is the recommendation and what we can do on that. But that's pretty much the intention. It is worth to mention that this database or this analysis, it's based on information related to a particularly segment of taxpayers in Mexico. The particular segment, it's called large taxpayers. This large taxpayers segment, it's only applicable when your taxable revenues in the year, it's higher than 1.2 billion pesos. Just to give you an estimated in dollars, that would be something equivalent to $55 million. If your taxable revenues in the prior year is higher than this amount, then you will fall into the category of being a large taxpayers which as you may uh, aware, not all the taxpayers in Mexico fall into these very large taxpayers uh, situations. But again, the government is making their analysis based on their information and then use it to compare with the rest of them. So it, it is what it is, it's what we have so far. So again, what the government wants you to do is that once you have the, the list published, you look for your business activity and then if you fall into that, review what is your effective tax rate versus the one that they already published. Okay, so as I was explaining, what the government says is, hey, if I say that for your business activity, the effective tax rate should be 3%, and you fall below that amount, then you are on a risk position, which means that it's more likely that I will carry out a dip reviewing or a further audit procedure, at least at first sight. Again, it does not mean that your calculation is incorrect, but it is likely that you could receive an invitation from the government just to review your situation and invite you to make corrections if needed. If it is the other way around, where the example was that the effect tax rate that they published was 3%. And it turns out to be that once you make your calculation, you do not fall in 3%, but you fall in 6%. Then they will tell you, thank you for participating. Thank you for being a great citizen. That would be it. You will pass over the radar. And in a certain way, it's unlikely that you will receive an audit from that point of view. What do authorities expect in case you are being audited in this case? Okay. It's likely that they will review at first sight if there is some aggressive tax planning that you're carrying out. As you know, in Mexico, we have a new regulation related to reportable schemes 
where we need to report to the government whenever we are carrying out a tax planning that generates a benefit for tax purposes. So if it is the case, they will like it's likely that they would like to review the tax planning that you're carrying out and that you're in compliance for the reportable scheme position as well. It's likely that they will review as well your transactions with non-related parties, but it's more likely that they will review particularly the ones related parties because it's more likely or it's more a common practice to use the intercompany transactions to erosion the profit in Mexico, particularly when you have multinational transactions with foreign countries. So corporate restructuring, is something that they will put attention as well, whether if it is national or international. Uh, interpretation of domestic and or international provision, and we highlight the word in here, interpretation, because as you know, there could be certain uh, gaps in the law or interpretation per se that the government might not share, but we took a different criteria, so they would like to see uh, what are the interpretation that we're giving to certain topics. In case we have double treaty uh, or uh, treaties to avoid double taxation, it's likely that they will review as well. As well, deduction payments that can represent an erosion on the Mexican tax base whenever we have multinational operations. And in case we have transactions with companies that currently appear on the blacklist of the government's website. As you know, there is a blacklist of taxpayers that the government has already identified that carry out fraudulent transactions. So if they found out that you're carrying out transactions with those taxpayers, meaning that you're receiving invoices, that you're deducting them in your tax return, it's likely that they will review this part as well. So moving on to the part of the economic activities, uh, can we move to the next slide, please? We can find a quick summary here that shows the segments or business economics that the government is pursuing to review, at least in these two first waves of publications. The first one, it was on June 30, and the second one was a couple of weeks ago on August 1st. At the beginning, they issue five, five main sectors, including mining, manufacturing industries, wholesale trade, retail trade, and financial services and insurances. And later down the road, the, go the government incorporated 11 new ones. So at the end, there is a total so far of 16 major categories. Out of those 16 major categories are subcategories, or I divide it in subcategories. So at the end, we have a total of 84 business activities that the government in particular, it's putting a lot of attention and has already published their list of effective income tax rates. Actually, if we go to the next slide, we have an example of one of out of the 84 business activities the company has, the, the government has already published. So this is an example of what you will see in the publications from the government, where you can find at the upper, at the upper uh, part of the slide, the segment that they're pursuing, in this case is the manufacturing of gasoline motors and parts for motor vehicles. And they issued the effective tax rates for the four years that we just described, 2016 to 2019. And they say that, for example, in year 2016, the effective rate that they came out to their analysis, it was 5.36%. So what the government wants you to do, again, it's that you take your annual tax return of that year, do the math, do the calculation where you compare your, inc your corporate income tax and divide it between your taxable revenues. And if from that comparison, it turns out that you are below 5.36% red flag from the government, it's likely that you will receive an invitation saying, hey, just make sure that to review your information. If it is the other way around where you are above the 5.36%, then it's likely that you pass or that you can fly below the radar. So again, this is the information that we have so far regarding to what the government has published. And now we're going to review how this could be impact on a transfer pricing position. And for this, my colleague Maria will continue with the presentation.
Thank you, Leo. So it is time to talk about transfer pricing and these effective tax rates for the different economic activities that may or may not have relation. But here we, we will try to explain and explore if there is certain implication of this public publication of tax authorities in transfer pricing aspects. Well, as a brief summary of what Leo has just mentioned, uh, but it is important to keep in mind certain concepts for, for, for you to follow me. Um, it is important to remember that the SAT published this reference, effective tax rate for 84 economic activities for different industries such as manufacturing, mining, construction, finance. Uh, there, there are many activities there, but it is a reference uh, data that you, that you or the authorities will use. For, for their purposes. The effective tax rate for uh, is the tax paid against the, your revenues in the company, the total revenues. Taxpayers with an effective tax rate that it is higher than the benchmark rate expressed by the tax authorities, we have lower risk of being audited. At the opposite, if your tax rate is lower, your risk of being audited by tax authorities will be higher. Therefore, the expectations here of the tax authority is that the taxpayer have an effective rate equal or greater or higher than the percentage that they present for these 16 to 19 uh, years. It is important to mention 2020 is not released yet, and I believe we all know why. No, uh, 2020 probably it's going to present totally different conditions for, for many, many industries. What we usually see in transfer pricing is that a benchmark analysis, uh, the, actually, uh, if you are familiar with transfer pricing, this benchmark concept uh, is pretty common in, in, the, in the area. And we commonly use it for uh, the transfer pricing documentation to determine if the company complies with uh, the arm's length principle. So, Transfer pricing by itself has its own methodologies to prove uh, and to carry out the, the analysis and prove that related parties were, were performing its activities in a similar circumstances that third parties will do. In this methodology for transfer pricing, uh, we try to start to match on what the authorities, how they calculate this tax rate and, and the effect how this affect, affect transfer pricing, we will find that the methodology that is commonly used for this kind of analysis, it is called transactional, transactional net margin method, is the most common use, uh, commonly used for Mexican taxpayer in their own documentation. And it uses uh, profit level indicators, in this case, for this, for, for have a relation, we will use the operating margin to perform all the comparisons that I'm going to show. Also, um, important to mention, this methodology implies um, a benchmark analysis that, I mean with the transfer pricing methodology, a benchmark analysis that is going to compare the results that you obtain by the parties involved in, in the inter company transactions with what third parties did in similar uh, functions, assets, and risks. Uh, these tax effective rates, etc., is not uh, made by hand like like in, in transfer pricing. I mean, it does not consider these functions, assets, and risks that make your company pretty particular, for example. But in transfer pricing, that is one, one of the uh, conditions for these benchmarks analysis. And well, in the majority of the cases in Mexico, the necessary for body for comparison is the is the Mexican taxpayer. So what we perform and want to show you is an exercise where the effective tax rate published by the SIT can be used for calculating an operating margin uh, that it is the operating profit divided by the your revenues, your total income before taxes, and considering this operating margin uh, as a reference and for these purposes for example we consider that we have a tax rate in Mexico of 30 percent 
on net earnings. Uh, so we can at least expect that the authority will ask for an operating margin three times uh, the, the, the payment of tax or, or the amount of paid taxes, considering all the parameters published. And obviously assuming concept as financial expenses, uh, other expenses and other income are not representative or relevant in a company. We, in, in, in our examples, use a little more of percentage, but, but the main idea is that, um, for example, in this, in, in, in a manufacturer, in an industry of manufacture of gasoline motors and parts for motor vehicles, if I go and go to the published uh, publishment in 2018, I'm going to see that they expect that your tax paid or tax effective rate is 3.9. 8%. But if I perform an analysis where I try to see the operating margin that uh, is a translation of this 3.9%, it gives me a 9.995 of operating income and products, considering some assumptions. So the idea to present here this example is where you can see the operating margin expected by tax authorities and uh, is, is to present also what is for transfer pricing expected in this kind of similar industries. Uh, by performing a benchmark analysis, uh, using databases that we usually use in, in transfer pricing, that contains public information for the U.S. companies, other uh, around the world companies also, and uh, the this this kind of connection we will see it in the in the next example. So here we have an example of what I've been mentioning. What you're going to see here are different uh, dif different economic activities in the in your left side, I believe. Uh, published by the SIT with the respective effective tax rates. Also, for these example purposes, you will see a calculation on the effective rate average as an industry in, in, in the bottom. In this case, the activity and industry are related to manufacturing of auto parts and auto, auto, auto automotive equipment. The therefore, the first set of rates, as mentioned, is effective tax rates. So the second set, the one in the gray area, are calculations that we perform that are based in the first, in the effective tax rates, and that gave us an operating margin that the SIT is expecting regarding uh, using this, this effective tax rate. So, so we have the gray area, we have operating profits for the different main activities. Um, I will consider Please, that these margins also have some assumptions on it, but it is for, for give you an example. And at the bottom of the table, what you will see is an interquartile range of operating profits obtained by comparable companies in the transfer pricing analysis. In this case, for the, for the same industry in general, not for the specific economic activity, for, for this example, we, we will perform an average of the industry. So, as you can see and compare, the operating margins that uh, the SIT seem to ask to the pay taxpayer are either near to the upper quartile of the, the range percent below or even above the, the, the upper quartile. Also, you can compare each year, for example, 2016, we have the average of 13.77% according to the effective tax rate publica publication. And it's higher than the average operating margin of 10 comparable companies that same year. So what does this mean or what we want to try to say? Well, suppose your company is an entity that actually performs many intercompany transactions or even that all the revenue is generated uh, claims come from, from related parties. So in that case, your current transfer pricing documentation will request a lower margin than the one that the SIT expects. So the taxpayer, you might find yourself in some conflict of being correct 
uh, as Leo mentioned, you, you, it doesn't mean you are not correct, uh, like in your tax calculations. It just means that uh, you may have a, a higher risk if you are below what we suppose is expected by the tax authority. This is a similar example as the one uh, of the manufacturer about the person equipment. But in this case, we mentioned uh, the manufacturing of steel, iron and metallic products. The main idea is that you can also see uh, another example of industry for this and that we are not like really picking the ones that we are convenient. Uh, this is happening for many industries. So in the past example, you can compare also the operating profits, that is the gray area, uh, obtained from the, ex the effective tax rates uh, published by the SIT and compare it with a, transfer, a typical transfer pricing analysis and, and see what you will be obtaining. For example, in this case, uh, as an industry as a whole, you can see also that most of the observation are in the upper quartile or near to or above the, the upper quartile. And so uh, what we are seeing is the same. The, the results expected by the SIT are higher than you will expect for transfer pricing purposes. And uh, here also we wanted to show uh, two, two inter-party range, one of them for Latin America comparables. And, for, and one for U.S. Uh, comparable since the industry in general had enough public information to do it. So also the margin expected in Latin America it seems to be higher than the U.S. according to this information, but in both the scenarios is actually the same conclusion that the operating margins obtained from the effective tax rates publications by the SID are below, sorry, are above and represents a lower effective rate, will, which will represent at the end a higher risk for the company to be out there. Well, it is important to mention that this analysis aims to provide you with a general idea of what the tax authorities will expect as a minimum operating profit based on the effective tax rate published by them. And it's not uh, in any time comprehensive, comprehensive or direct comparison. In this case, you need to see and review your own company, compare it with your specific economic activity and review what is the situation specific for you. Uh, as conclusion of these examples, uh, if the taxpayer, as I mentioned before, has a large part of its income or deductions, with related parties, it can be expected that any adjustment to assign this higher effective tax rate, like the, the, the tax authorities is thinking, uh, probably will be adapting your transfer pricing and your transfer prices in your company transactions, or even an audit process, a pro, a process that it is enforced because this SATS observation or, or that will be for, for this SATS observation, it's going to be really easy that they audit also your transfer pricing documentations, transactions, etc. And, and this be part of this uh, effective tax rate analysis if you, you are in this assumption. So what do we recommend to review this transfer pricing uh, conclusions with, with the effective tax rate, well, review your documentation, your transfer price in the documentation. Uh, it, is, it is important that your current documentation, you feel comfortable with it, that you are using correct comparable companies uh, in that, that you are actually uh, happy with that this has economic substance that it is relevant that uh, the transaction actually is happening, that you are comfortable in supporting that if you fall under this effective tax rate expected by the SIT and you operate with your related parties, you are comfortable with on what you have with related parties. It's because the authorities will use this as a risk measurement and uh, to to align all, all taxpayers for this. 
So it is important to have it and important, important if you are not sure or in compliance, well, to prepare your defense file, to keep, it, to keep in mind this documentation that you will need and, and have it in case a tax authority comes to review. And also important for, for many Mexican subsidiaries, we can see also that there is not only one activity. We have examples where we have manufacturing and distribution activities. And it is reasonable to pretend that one activity will be obtaining higher operating profits and effective tax rates. And in the other activity will be, for example, getting lower. So. Uh, from our, our perspective, it is important um, to, to have in mind this, this division of the uh, information and that you can uh, to obtain or see what is the effective tax rate in the manufacturing, what is the effective tax rate in the distribution, because probably the tax authority will only categorize you in one of them and you have to, to, to be able to provide this explanation. So, well, here, uh, this is the, the transfer pricing in general, but we want to move on into other considerations that we believe that you have to keep in mind and that are relevant for this, for this aspect. So, uh, you have to review and check if the, uh, in this fiscal year, the 2016 to 2019, the margin that are determined by tax authorities uh, are not do not correspond to the margin that you are determined according to the arrangement. Right. And if this is happening and you're comfortable with it, to support and have the, the uh, documentation that can explain the results obtained. Thank you, Maria. Another point to keep in mind as well as considerations, it's the one related to where the government is taking the information to elaborate these models or these analysis for the effective income tax rates. As we had mentioned in the past, they take the information based on the database of the large taxpayers segment in Mexico, which it's, it's unsure if the government will only use this analysis to pursue the same segment the large taxpayer segment, or if once they have the information of these database and these models, they pretend to use it with the rest of the taxpayers. It's unsure. Nowadays, it's not clear what the government's intention. However, we do believe that if they do not use these database or these models for the rest of the taxpayers, eventually they will look to get their own models or their own forecast for the rest of the taxpayers. Because at the end of the day, this helps the government as a uh, recovery measures of taxes in Mexico. So it's something that they would like to mirror and to use for the rest of the taxpayers within the country and not only to the large payer standards. Also for transfer pricing, remember, uh, here we have a benchmark in these effective tax rates with uh, taxpayers here in Mexico for transfer pricing purposes in Mexico, we use databases and the information usually comes from public companies abroad in, in foreign entities, in this case in the US or, 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 or other countries. So the tax authorities, we, we think that may use this as uh, to, to, to contrast or to to not accept if your um, conclusions are different because your transfer pricing has different results. Important to say that for transfer pricing, also the SIT uses the same databases that all, all practitioners in transfer pricing use. Uh, they use the US entities and the other around uh, other country entities for the for transfer pricing purposes. But well, at, at the end, uh, there is not a direct comparison with Mexican entities. Another topic to keep in mind as well, just to, to remember it, it's that for accounting purposes and for metrics and measurements of profitability within a company, it's unnecessary or sometimes it's not as relevant, the fact of having an expense to have it deductible or non-deductible from 
an economic standpoint of view or from a financial standpoint of view. However, from a tax standpoint of view, the government does make the separation of deductible and non-deductible items. As you know, any non-deductible expense in Mexico ends up costing 30% of income tax uh, at the moment of the tax return. So it's definitely something to keep in mind to try to have as much uh, deductible expenses as possible or reduce the non-deductible expenses as possible to be able to have a similar profit margin when you compare your profit margin from an accounting perspective versus a tax perspective. And final but not least, also to keep in mind again, that this is for these effective income tax rates that the government published are just points of references, meaning that at the end of the day, the taxpayer in case of a reviewing or an audit procedure, they must be able to demonstrate how they obtain the profit margin and that it is really supported with enough documentation and transactions to be able to demonstrate that everything was calculated and was done properly. We would like to make a couple of final conclusions based on the discussions that we had been making so far. So moving on to the next slide, just remember that these rates, again, are just a point of references for the government. It does not imply that if I fall below the effective income tax rate the government published, it means that I did something incorrect or it means that uh, my calculations are incorrect. It doesn't mean that. It just means that this is a point of reference. So just to keep it in mind and make sure and make a double reviewing if your numbers are correct. Also make sure that all your intercompany transactions are actually at arm's length at market value so you can minimize a potential risk when the effective rate is below of what is expected or suggested by the uh, tax administration. The other topic to keep in mind as we, as, as my colleague Maria already mentioned, is if I am a legal entity that I have different two or more business activities, just to be able to demonstrate what is your or what would be your profitability your profitability margins for each segment because it's likely that at first sight the government will try to allocate you in one in particular when you might have three or four so if that is your case it's likely that their first approach analysis that the government made it's incorrect because they will contemplate that you're carrying out only one business activity when you have different ones so again, it's just a precaution that in your defense file, make sure that you have your business activities segregated by segment. And finally, well, just to remember, this is a reminder, this methodology used by uh, tax administration services by the SIT, uh, comparing these effective rates is not, does not correspond to a transfer pricing methodology itself. No, it does not be seen as such. Uh, we are just trying to explain how how this may affect or, or what, what can be affected in, in, in your transfer price documentation and intercompany transactions. So I think from our side, this is it. Thank you. And uh, we are we are going to the Q&A and please answer some. Some query. Thank you so much for your participation. Moving along, we will begin with our questions and answer session. If there's questions that are unanswered by the end of this blog, we will contact you as soon as possible with the replies. Our very first question is, if after reviewing this publication, I see that the company is below of what the authority established and the Mexican company has payments to an entity of the group in the US, should I adjust those payments directly? If you want, I can answer that, Leo. Sure. Um, well, if I understand, our recommendation in this aspect is to review how comfortable do you feel regarding your intercompany transactions. As I mentioned, meaning that the transaction actually have substance, is for business purposes, is necessary for the Mexican operation. So if the answer is yes, then to review the transfer pricing transactions um, all, all what it is inside of the the pricing of this of this transaction and a thorough a review of your intercompany agreement policies etc so if you're comfortable with all the uh, doing after all doing all this 
then actually I, I don't think any adjustment is needed from your payments. Um, and, and not because only the tax effective rate right now. And in the case and an audit, you, I, you will have to support your transactions. So it is important to, to review you if you are in the lower part of the tax rate uh, exposed by, in the, by the authority. And if this is caused by your intercompany transactions or many other effects that uh, financial effects that can, can explain the results before any adjustment of your payments. Thank you so much, Maria Jose. We have another question here in our audience. When will the rates of other type of activities be published or are they not obligated? If, if you like, I can take that one, Maria. Uh, there is not a particular date in which the government will issue the new lists. As you know, uh, the government has been gradually publishing them and it is expected that in the following weeks or even months, the government could keep publishing new lists based on different activities. Uh, we do recommend uh, just to keep in mind that to constantly make reviewing uh, in the website of the government to make sure if they have published new lists, because if they have and you fall into one of the categories, it is intended that you make the reviewing, your auto reviewing of your effective income tax rate. Thank you so much, Leonardo. We also have another question here. If I comply with the effective tax rate established, then do I still need to transfer pricing documentation? Yeah, the answer is yes. I mean, the income tax law by itself establishes that in Mexico, the taxpayer, you will have to demonstrate that in just transactions with related parties, you have performed them as third parties will do in comparable situations. So, the fact is that uh, you may or not uh, adjust your effective tax rate, but does not necessarily mean, and, and we, uh, how we explain, that your comp intercompany transactions were performed in compliance with the arms length principle or at market value. So the authority obviously will have the capacity to open you out it for, for the company. So you can review your transfer, they can review your transfer pricing documentation, intercompany transactions, and actually, well, uh, it can be double because it's different sections and, and you have be have to be in compliance with, with transfer pricing, no matter that this effective tax rates. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Jose. Um, our other question here is, what is the deadline to make the necessary adjustments to be close or near to the effective rate of my sector? If, if you like, I can, I can take that one, uh, Maria. Th there, is not particular, uh, there is not a particular deadline that taxpayers has to make any corrections if needed. Again, uh, the main idea is to keep in mind that these are references for the government that they're using. So the taxpayers could review their numbers, review their tax returns, each of the tax, re their annual tax return for 2016 to 19, make the comparison to make sure that you, wh where you're standing at. If it turns out that you are above the range, then at, at first sight, you're on the safe side and it's unlikely that you will receive an audit from the government. If you are below, the recommendation is to review the information, to review your calculations and make sure just that you have your paperwork and everything in order in case the government comes and makes a report. Thank you so much, Leonardo. Our last question here in the audience is, if I find that I am at high risk, how many years do I have to go back and do the amendments? I, th I think there is not a particular, like a, a per se or mandatory obligation to correct from that year and going forward or from that year specifically. What, what we recommend is to make the calculation of the four years individually. If it turns out that you have a discrepancy or that you are in a risk position from the government's point of view under this analysis, 
in one particular year, we are recommending our clients to review that particular year, their tax calculations, paperwork, et cetera, just to make sure that you have a clear conscience. If it turns out to be that there is something incorrect, it's likely, or the recommendation is to go and make the amendments and recommendations before the government comes in, because that way you could save some uh, fees and in terms of penalties and surcharges in case the government did tax them in, as part of the reviewing. However, uh, just to keep in mind that whenever you make a change to a one tax return, it's possible that you will need to make additional modifications to the following ones because some of the indicators stated in one tax return affects the calculation of the subsequent years. So it could create a domino effect. So just to keep in mind, that if you fall into the uh, arrest scenario, just review your information to make sure everything is in safe. Thank you so much, Leonardo. Due to time matters, this will be our last question. Keep in mind if there's still any questions answered, um, we will actually be getting back in touch with you via email with the replies and the answers. The last question is, what is the activities is not included in the SAT list? Uh, I, I think Leo already mentioned it, but uh, what we do recommend is, what we expect is in the future, all or most of all the activities will be in, the, in this list of the tax government. And if not, what we do recommend is review how you are inscribed in the uh, your federal tax code in Mexico, uh, which activity you are within, e even if you are, are not performing this activity, and also to review your closest comparison of what you are, you are actually doing and, and see this as a parameter. But we believe at the end, uh, probably will have for most of the industries or activities. I don't know, I'll leave you. You say, you think yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, the, the government is pushing from any side they can to try to recover as much taxes as possible. So it's likely that we see a large uh, subsequent list or subsequent waves of less. But at the end, the intention might be to have a large portion of all the business activities within this list. Thank you so much, Leonardo and Maria Jose for answering these questions. And well, for now, we have reached the end of this webinar. Dave Real Helping Companies Do Business in Latin America appreciates your interest and remains at your service. For any further questions or inquiries that you have related to the subject, please feel free to send us an email to contacto at Dave Rio, which is the one that we show appearing on the screen. We thank everyone for your time and participation and wish you all have a great day.